task tonight against Penn State. And they will strike first thanks to that service error. Not the way you want to start, but first serve, got to kind of just flush that one out. And Iowa really focused on their serving going into this match. They need to try to get Penn State out of system from the get-go. Penn State has also struggled at the service line this year. Last in the Big Ten and aces per set, not a strong part of their game. Second contact is awkward and a free ball for the Hawkeyes to start out. And they immediately go to the middle. Delaney McSweeney at six foot seven puts it away. Great, great decision there by setter Bailey Ortega to find Delaney McSweeney out of the middle right away. You want to try to establish your offense, and one of the ways to do that is to get your middle going in the start of the set so you can free up your pin hitters for more one-on-one -on -one blocks. Moravec still at the service line. Targeting Merzek, something we could see quite a bit today, and getting Penn State out of system in the process. Utener getting a piece of the block. And Merzik tools it perfectly. Merzik is so lethal as an attacker, not only because of the power that she brings. When she unloads on a ball, everyone in that gym hears it. But she's also smart and is able to see when the blockers across from her aren't disciplined and pressed over the mat. This combination of athleticism, power, vision, range, everything you can ask for. Good effort by Sydney Dennis. Send right back with that Iowa block, looking to slow down Penn State. How about once more? And the Hawkeyes pick up the point. Exactly what Iowa's going to need so far. They're going to need to try to slow down this Penn State offense from the beginning. Welcome everyone who is watching men's soccer here on Big Ten Network. We've got number 13 Penn State against upset-minded Iowa in Coralville. The Nittany Lions, the number 13 ranked team in the country, has never lost to the Hawkeyes. Going back behind her head and absolutely blasting it is Cameron Hannah. I love Cameron Hanna on the right side for Penn State because she's such a dynamic attacker who has such a fast arm swing. So when she gets those kills, they almost go past you too fast as a defense to get your block in front of it and then to dig it. At the service line, Natty Bilinovic, defensive specialist, an area where Penn State is very deep on this roster. Ortega chases it down and a big dig in the back row by Angelina Stark. Moravec keeping it on the, off the ground, but sent right back by Pedraza, taking advantage of that overdick. Two coaches in their second year with their respective programs in this matchup, including for Penn State alum, Katie schumacher Colley, looking to lead this team to their first Big Ten championship since 2017. And they're on target right now. There's a lot of focus on number one and two, Nebraska and Wisconsin, but Penn State playing fiercely. And that's how I describe that swing from Allie Holland up the middle. Absolutely. I mean, you said it. They're one of the best teams in our conference and also in the country, ranked 13th. Allie Holland is a big part of that. She's a great attacker, but she's a huge force up at the net as a blocker as well. So I'm looking forward to see the type of wall that she puts up tonight. And also very offensive-minded as a middle, too. Pedraza on the slide, perfectly placed by Holland. Just like you said, a very offensive-minded middle who's one of the best blockers in the nation as well. So kind of a double threat there. But Allie Holland on the slide, she wants to get set the ball. She talks about how every time the ball's in play, she wants to be set that ball. Mac Pedraza fed it to her, and she put that away for a nice slide kill. Bilinovic keeping things going for Penn State, now leading by two. It's Butner and then dug by Stark. Merzik slicing it with power. Jess Merzik, I've talked about her so much, but she's such a dynamic athlete. She's able to destroy balls even when there's a nice double block up in front of her. One thing that head coach Jim Barnes for Iowa said when I asked him, how are you going to plan on stopping Jess Merzik? He said, we're going to put up four blockers and see if the refs notice. I was like, <laughs> I don't know if that'll work, coach, but that's what you have to do against a player like Jess Merzik. It's kind of season she's having. It's blocked by Penn State. Iowa scrambling. Draws another slide, and that lands on Iowa's side. A point to Penn State. 
You mentioned head coach Jim Barnes in his second season. They've already played four top 25 teams in Big Ten play as he calls a timeout. Penn State extending to a four-point lead, the number 13 ranked team in the country, rolling in Iowa. that he wants his team to learn. How do we limit times of mistakes and get a side out here and finding those moments where they can get it back? Iowa out of system, but finding the perfect spot is Audrey Black in her first start since September 1st. Talked a little bit about the production that this Iowa offense needs, and right side production is definitely a big part of the consistency that the offense is going to need. So Audrey Black getting a kill early in the set from the right side, looking really positive for this Iowa offense. Barnes says there's runs where we're consistent as Michelle Urquhart, one of the best servers in the Big Ten, goes to work. And there's one of the best offensive setters in the Big Ten, Pedraza with the dump. Nothing quite like a setter dump. Setter dumps really, as a setter, you want to put that ball away. You want to set up your hitters, of course, but when you have an opportunity like that, she places that so well in the middle of the court where the defenders aren't a nice quick kill for your team. Is she seeing at the corner of her eye that there are no blockers in front of her? Or when is she making that determination? Absolutely. I mean, as a setter, before you set a ball, you're checking really quick out of the corner of your eye where those blockers are so you can know how which hitter to set up and where the blockers are cheating towards. So she's seeing no one's on her. She's going to put that ball away herself. Beautiful ace by Jess Merzik. And she heads back to the service line. Dennis can't get a handle of it. And we've seen a lot of teams target Dennis in serve receipt. When you have Jess Merzik behind the line as well, she's a great server, and this is something the Penn State team is focused on, serving tougher. Iowa's a great serving team, but they do struggle on the service receive time there. Sydney Dennis just lets the ball catch her a little bit too far behind her. Too late for a good pass on that one. Hawkeyes allowing the second most service aces per set in Big Ten play. Here's Alexa Markley getting a piece of the block, and she's got great power as well, whipping it over. I love watching Alexa Markley on the outside for Penn State because she has a whip for an arm. I might date myself a little here, but she reminds me of Penn State old outside hitter Erica Pritchard just with how quick of an arm swing that she has. She can be so explosive and lethal, lethal on that outside pin. When you look at her, you don't think power, but she absolutely cracks it like a whip when she is able to swing. It's with that speed. It's how quick her arm swing is that when you have speed like that, you're going to beat the blockers. You're going to beat the defenders. And that's what makes her successful on the outside. Second service air for Penn State. Iowa, a team that wants to be aggressive at the service line. Put the pressure on Penn State, get them out of system. But that's not what happens this time. Perfectly in system. And that leads to a kill from Markley. Great swing by Markley, but a beautiful set there by Mac Pedraza. Not a perfect pass, but Mac Pedraza is moving off the net, 10-foot line, and she's able to set that ball exactly to where Markley needs it. That's a veteran setter move, and having a setter like Mac Pedraza is going to allow Markley to put away some of those balls. Moravec gets it over, and the point is going to go to Penn State. Too many touches there. Penn State definitely building some momentum right now. They're getting their offense firing, which we knew they have a fantastic offense. But 10 kills so far, so far already on just 13 attempts. That's the Penn State offense that we've seen so far this conference play. That's tough for Iowa. They want to try and keep pace with those kills. There's a nice one there by Moravec going off the block. Moravec has a lot of range as an attacker, and right there we see she has a blocker up in front of her, and she's not afraid to go after Mac Pedraza's hands. She has some power, but she uses the blocker's hands to put that ball down on the other side. It's something that Coach schumacher Kali is working on with Pedraza in the short couple months they have together. How do we get her to be a more all-around player, digging more, blocking more as well? It's kind of crazy to hear because Mac Pedraza last year was the Big Ten setter of the year. She's an All-American. She's a fantastic player, but she's still working to improve her game in those other parts like her blocking and her defense to make her even better. Here she is at the service line. 
Goes to Michelle Urquhart. From the middle, on the back row. It's going to send a sail a little too long and a point to Penn State to put them up 15 to 6. Iowa definitely looking to get some consistency in their offense right now. So using that back row attack makes sense. Just got to kind of limit those errors. Keep that ball in play if it's not a killable set. Consistency, the word we heard a whole lot from Coach Barnes in our chat with him. Here's Moravec, and she's able to get a piece of that block. Great swing there by Moravec, but also a perfectly placed set there by Bailey Ortega, who's actually running a 5-1 in this match, which means she's playing all the way around front row and back row, and she's the sole setter for this team. This Iowa team has been messing around a little bit with some different setting lineups, and Bailey Ortega is going into this match, running the show completely to try to bring some consistency to their offense. And an excellent ace right there by Ortega. They have always wanted her on the floor for her leadership. They especially like her on the slide as well. But it's a transition for them, Elena, to move from that 5-2 where you have different setters in front row and the other in back row because now they're prioritizing consistency over that blocking. Hannah absolutely crushes it for another kill. It's 16-8 Penn State. Against a team like Penn State, you'd think maybe we want to prioritize our block, but you also have to get your offense going as well. So I understand that decision of going with a 5-1 with an experienced setter like Ortega, trying to get some offensive consistency, get your slide back into your offense as well. Service error by Penn State, their third in this first set. As Iowa looks to stay within striking distance on their home floor. Moravec back to serve. They go to Merzik who passes, then attacks. And the overpass for Penn State. Up the middle, trammel, and kept off the floor. But that point is going to go to Penn State. They couldn't quite get it. That was a really great off blocker defensive move, but she just wasn't right there. Great touch by McSweeney up at the net to slow down that attack by Trammell and then Audrey Black trying to get under it. I like the defensive effort, but that's a play that Iowa team needs to just execute a little bit better. Julian Grimes serving up the middle. Delaney McSweeney. Coach Barnes says win the middle, and it's been working well the times they've gone to her. And I love that. Delaney McSweeney comes down from the kill, looks at her team and says, let's keep going. Whether she's telling her setter, keep setting those middles, let's keep going. Try to build some momentum. Winning that middle is exactly what's going to allow them to build momentum as the set goes on. Nice block up the middle, and Audrey Black making an impact for the Hawkeyes. Winning the middle right there. Winning the middle not only means stopping the middle attacker, but also getting kills on your side. So there you go, stopping Ollie, Allie Holland, who's a fantastic middle attacker for Penn State. That's what the Iowa team needs. Put up some blocks, put up some middle kills, and win that middle part of the court. Hannah Davis also there on the stop as well as Stark shanks it. And another ace. The second for the Hawkeyes in set number one. One thing both coaches stressed to us was that you need to win the serve in the pass game. So we're going to see a lot of aggressive serving in this match. Stark picks it up this time. It's Hannah going off the block. She is overpowering. Hannah's been extremely efficient so far this set, and we've seen her put the ball away multiple different ways. Fantastic set there by Mac Pedraza. It's left a little bit inside, and so Hannah knows I have the line off of my blocker, but I need to use their arm because otherwise, if I hit it straight into them, I'm going to get roofed. So that's just a very smart attack by Cameron Hannah. Penn State hitting 6-11, 13 kills already off the slide. It is Anna Davis. Anna Davis is someone that this Iowa team wants to get involved in their offense a little more as well. She's not the most explosive player, but she's so smart about her shots there. That set is in front of her, and she's able to just hit it over to where that defense isn't. And it's not always about getting those most impressive kills, but it's putting that ball away, and that's exactly what Davis did. Into the net, and a point to Penn State puts them up by six. Banana Davis, fantastic to see her back onto the court. An ACL tear last year, had to relearn how to jump. 
And Barnes said that she is the hardest worker I've ever coached. Even the training staff so impressed with how quickly she came back. And a big force up the middle for the Hawkeyes. Here she is once more. This time denied. It is Holland and Markley reading it to perfection. Beautiful read there by those Penn State blockers. They're able to see it's a good pass. Bailey Ortega is going to want to run Anna Davis on the slide. She's a great slide attacker. So Alexa Markley gets there, sets up that block, and presses over, is able to shut it down. Great move by Markley. Kept alive by Ortega, flipped over. And Markley, so much power on that swing. And she's gonna, gonna get another crack at it. Kept up, though, by the Hawkeyes. Markley one more time, and this time she puts it away. Pedraza keeps feeding her, and she does what she's supposed to do. Third time's the charm there for Markley, but this Iowa defense is relentless. They're very scrappy, and they're known for not really giving up on plays. They're going to keep giving you opportunities, and you're not going to be able to put that ball away on them on the first try. Great job there by Markley getting this Penn State offense rolling. Timeout called on the floor. Penn State leading 21-13 on the road. Those trips so important to building that camaraderie and connection in the offseason. Not just getting to play together, but getting to travel with your teammates. Those are some really important memories. Yeah, there were some pretty nice scenes there that I wish I could have experienced in person. Me too. <laughs> Here's Ortega looking to Butner and then dug by Grimes. Absolute power there by Markley. Unstoppable here in set one. Alexa Markley is so impressive on the outside because she has so much power that she truly just beats the blockers. The blockers are getting up there, but she swings so fast that the ball's passing them before they're fully pressed over the net. Already four kills on six swings for the sophomore. Here's Butner once more, and she gets a piece of that block. Butner carries a heavy load for this Iowa team, so I'm not surprised that they're going to try to go to her. As the end of the set comes, as they're trying to get some more offense going, right here she has a double block in front of her, and she's able to use the block attacker. That comes with the experience that she has out on the court and just her overall court vision. Spent the four years of her career at Texas State, so not only first power five, but here in the Big Ten as Markley continues to go to work, hammering it down. Alexa Markley is on fire right now. Mac Pedraza just feeding her the ball, which is exactly what you're supposed to do. When you have an attacker who's putting away almost every single ball that you're setting them, you keep setting them, especially when it's the first set and you're just kind of still building your momentum as a team. Coach Schumacher Colley says she just keeps getting better and better, and that's because of her aggressiveness off the overpass. Taylor Trammell's not going to let that go. Taylor Trammell up there at the net, definitely not going to let an overpass come back to her side, but that starts from the service line. A great aggressive serve from Penn State, which has been a big focus of their play so far in conference. They're not the best serving team when it comes to aces, so Allie Holland on that back line is definitely trying to put the pressure on Iowa. Natalie Moravec gets a piece, and how about that dig by Merzik? And a point to Penn State, the effort leading to the kill. Once again, polish and she continues to elevate. It's kind of scary. She's just going <laughs> to keep getting better and better. It's kind of kind of scary for other teams. Allie Moravec starting things out at the service line for Iowa and Cameron Hanna goes off the block and kept up by the Hawkeyes. Great dig by Grimes reading that swing off the middle. Readjusting is Butner. She can't quite get it in, and Penn State will start it off with point number one. Great defensive effort on both sides, but I love seeing that Penn State team after that point's over. They're going to Taylor Trammell, who is able to cover Cameron Hanna on the right side, giving some love to their middle playing defense. Off the tape and red by Black. A violation will get the point to Iowa. Sydney Dennis back to serve for Iowa, put up 14 points in set one as a team hit just 182. Draza gets it to Merzek, who demolishes that ball. 
That was beautiful all around. Textbook volleyball with a great pass. Mac Pedraza able to run her offense. When you give her that opportunity and you have a player like Merzik on that outside, it's going to be a quick side out for Penn State, which is exactly what we saw right there. You have to try to get them out of system because when Penn State's offense is in system, they're lethal. Ortega looking to black. Pedraza behind her head. It's Holland on the slide. Great job by Ortega, keeping it off the ground. And the point to Penn State after that goes in the Nets, giving them a 3-1 to one lead early in set two. Iowa's defense is doing a really good job of giving their attackers second chances to be back in transition and try to kill the ball again. I like the idea of the swing there. Just rolled off the tape a little bit. Maybe Coach Barnes thinks there was a touch on that. I'm not quite sure what he's chatting about, but the Iowa defense is giving their offense opportunities to try to kill the ball. Penn State leading by two. And it looks like this will be challenged by Coach Barnes. Each coach receives two challenges per match. Reversal, they get to retain that challenge. If it's confirmed, they lose that challenge. So Barnes deciding to use this one early in set two. Originally called an attack air by Caitlin Butner. Look to see if Penn yeah. State touched that ball. Looks to me like that's just clear in the net. She was trying to cut shot that ball to the four spot on the other side of the net. Allie Holland immediately saying no touch. So I don't know. I'm going to say that this call is going to stand, that there wasn't any touch on it. But that's a pretty good challenge for Coach Barnes, even just to try to slow down a Penn State run at the beginning of the set. Yeah, it's interesting. I'm sure there are analytics about when you use those challenges, the points, the sets, the separation. But I think we've seen Penn State, how they were able to pull away in set one and think, can we break that up? I think one of the things you don't see in the analytics is the body language of the players after a play. So right there, Allie Holland immediately was like, I didn't touch that ball. The Iowa team didn't look super confident, so that call's confirmed. There was no touch. Sometimes those are the things that you see. The players immediately know, I touched that ball. There was a touch on that ball, and they come down pretty confident from the play. So that's a quick, kind of easy way to see. Sometimes you can fake it, but a lot of the times <laughs> you can tell from their body language. A volleyball unwritten code. Absolutely. Oh, Barnes loses that challenge. And he has one remaining as Holland just the finger whack on that stop. Allie Holland up at the net. She's a fantastic blocker. She's third in the Big Ten in blocks per set. And she's just so good at reading where the set is and getting up quick off the ground. That was a really quick set to the middle. She's really explosive, gets up, presses over, and shuts down the quick set. Entering this match, 24 blocks her last three matches. And Merzik with the solo rejection. Love seeing that from Merzik. When you're one-on-one, -on -one, it's really important that you are pressed over the net. And that's exactly what Jess Merzik did here. She's pressed over, presses her hands back into the court, goes outside to inside the court, is able to shut that down in a one-on-one -on -one situation. She was in a different area code from any other blocker and is able to shut it down. Stark from the back row lands her team a free ball off the overpass. Going to be a point to oh Iowa. Definitely a point. You could tell Allie Holland wanted that one back. Great set there by Mac Pedraza. Holland going for line, but giving Iowa just their block was up there taking that line from her, so she had no choice really but to hit that antenna. So give credit to the Iowa block for getting up on her, as Allie Holland is a great slide attacker. Black has that sail just long, giving the point to Penn State. They lead by four. Merzik now back to serve for Penn State. One of the ultimate six rotation players in this conference has been strong at the service line as well. On the back row, it's more of that roll shot over. Up the slide again, it's Holland and a brick wall she's met by. 
beautiful block there by Caitlin Buettner, getting up, reading that that set is going back to Holland. She's able to get up quickly, press those hands in the out, and shut down that top of the net. That's exactly what Iowa's defense is going to need, is to try to take away one part of the court from Penn State when they're setters front row and they only have two front row attack options. Getting it to Markley, Ortega behind her head. It's Davis off the slot. Reaching up and getting the kill is Holland. Smart play there by Holland. She got denied twice on the slide, so she decided to stay in front of Mack, even though Mack is a front row setter. Able to get that ball in play, she has two blockers in front of her, so she tips it right over the top where the defenders are, right into that donut hole of the court for a nice quick kill. She made herself available quite often on that point. Dug in the back row by Merzik. There's Markley finding space. That's an extremely difficult shot by Markley. That ball is coming over her head. She has no vision of the blockers, so she's just kind of going up there and swinging. She's a very dynamic athlete with a great jump, so she's able to get that over those blockers. But that's a really risky play, and it was able to pay off for her. A high flyer for Penn State. And a free ball for the Nittany Lions. Draws is going to get it to Markley, and she terminates. If I'm Mac Pedraza right now, you have so many weapons on your team, but Alexa Markley is terminating this ball better than anyone else for the Nittany Lions. She's able to get up and swing so fast around that Iowa block that's giving her the line to attack. Timeout called with Penn State leading. In this match, though, Alexa Markley has taken over. Eight kills on 12 swings, no airs. She has as many kills as Iowa as a team. She's been extremely aggressive with every attack she's had so far, mixing up her shots, but also bringing power and is not afraid when the Iowa team puts up a double block in front of her. Ortega goes to Moravec. And Markley kept off the ground, though, by the Hawkeyes. And into the block goes Markley. She has so much confidence right now. Alexa Markley is going for it, and Mac Pedraza is going to keep feeding her the ball until that Iowa defense figures out a way to stop her. They were able to pick up that off-speed shot from her, but it's when she's hammering the ball and hitting it with her fast arm swing, they haven't been able to quite figure out how to stop her yet. Holland back to serve again, but an error. The fourth of the game for the Nittany Lions. It's always nice to see a middle go on a little serving run for your team. Middles pride themselves on being able to serve because only one of them usually serves. You have your libero serve for the other one. So being the serving middle also means you get to play a little bit of defense. So great job there by Ali Holland on the service line. Pedraza makes the adjustment and that's the first air of the night for Alexa Markley. Looks like she was going for just a little bit too much, just missed that line out wide, but the Iowa block is finally starting to challenge her a little bit more and forcing her to hit those wide shots. She's down to 533 hitting right now as Penn State gets out of system. Off the slide, it is McSweeney who's able to get it over. She wasn't quite sure which side of the net that ball landed on, but Delaney McSweeney getting up on the slide. She's able to beat the blockers who aren't fully pressed over yet, and she sees that. Swinging into the block is a really scary thing, but she has two blockers in front of her, still attacks them and is able to beat them. Nice pass. That sets up Penn State looking at Markley. Ortega tries to dump it in. More of that as that sent back. One more time into that Penn State block, and it drops. Just a little bit of a miscommunication there on Penn State side, but it allows Iowa to score, allowing them to go on a 4-0 scoring run. Moravec is attacking those blockers. She knows she has a double block up in front of her, so I think she was probably trying to just keep that ball in play, and it was able to fall for a point. Markley perfectly tooling it once more. 
Really smart play there by Markley as she sees that Iowa center Bailey Ortega is up in the front row. That's a little bit of a mismatch as Ortega is a slightly undersized setter. So Alexa Markley is going to go after her hands because this is also one of the first matches that Ortega has run a full 5-1 for the season. So she might not have all those blocking reps. So it's probably a little bit of their strategy to exploit that matchup. Ortega tries to dump in once more. Penn State right there. And another big kill. This time the swing from Hannah. I do like the Bailey Ortega dump. She's trying to make herself active, which is what you have to do as a front row setter. And head coach Jim Barnes said she's actually their, by far their best attacking setter. She's very good at it. So she needs to make herself a threat to keep this Penn State block honest. Yeah, she's listed at five foot nine, but he said she's solid. She can do it. Utner from the back row for the Hawkeyes and tenting the floor there is Hannah putting it away. Everything is going this Penn State offense's way right now. Mac Pedraza has so many options with Markley on the outside as well as Merzik. And then you have Cameron Hanna who's destroying the ball on the right side. I want to see Penn State get their middle going a little bit more as well. But when you have both of your pins killing that ball, you kind of get to have your choice of who you're setting. There it goes for Ortega right there and she earns the kill. Love that for Bailey Ortega. We're just talking about how offensive she is as, as a setter. And she is an undersized setter, but she doesn't look like it. She's able to get up there and throw that ball down with power against blockers on the other side of the net that are bigger than her. As a front row setter, you have to make yourself a threat to make those blockers respect you at the net. Iowa earning the point with that play at the net. And all of a sudden, they're within four. Great serve. It all starts from the service line with getting Penn State out of system there. Their offense has been so efficient. The quickest way to slow them down is to force them to pass great serves. Ortega at the service line. Merzik. And the block by McSweeney. They're within three, proving themselves at the net. Fantastic block there by Iowa, but like I just said, that starts from the service line. When you're able to get Penn State out of system, your block is going to be able to set up quicker. It's exactly what they did there. And when you have someone like Delaney McSweeney across from you at the net, she's really difficult to hit around. Up the middle, it is Taylor Trammell just drilling it. I feel like they might be listening to me because I said I wanted to see more middles, and now here we have Taylor Trammell, Mac Pedraza getting her more involved, and that's someone who's pretty efficient out of the middle, and when you get her going, she can go off. Three kills on three swings. We saw it against Minnesota where she had 16 kills on 20 swings, no airs, just a couple matches removed from that huge game. <laughs> Raced over and Trammell keeping it up. It is Hannah, and that is just unstoppable when she unleashes the heat. Cameron Hannah swinging down the line there. Her typical power shot is actually cross court, but she's able to switch up her shots. That Iowa team probably scouted her hitting cross court. She's really switching up her shots, hitting line there. She's tooled the block a couple times, and she has six kills. That's what you need as you get to a higher level. You need to be able to mix up your shots and move the ball around so that you can score in different ways. Hannah, an All-American at Clemson, but she's been a big part of this team by giving Pedraza more more options than just Merzik. Absolutely. Ortega up the middle, and there she makes the stop. Taylor Trammell, nowhere to go. I love the run by Iowa. Bailey Ortega off the net, trying to keep her middles involved. But this Penn State block read that so well and put up an absolute wall. Taylor Trammell's up quickly and pressed over for a nice stuff walk. McSweeney that time is able to get it down, keeping her confidence up after she was stopped a couple times. We're seeing a lot of good things on both sides of the net right now. Iowa trying to bounce back. McSweeney just got shut down, and Baylor Ortega says, hey, I trust you're going to put this ball away. Get up for me again. I will reward you. And that's exactly what they just did. Going back to a hitter after an error helps rebuild their confidence. Pedraza looking deep cross court and a point to Penn State. Merzik facing a huge block, able to tool it. 
Jess Merzik hits that ball so hard that when it comes down, it comes down so fast. It's honestly <laughs> hard to see where it landed. I mean, you hit so fast, it's going to come back even faster. So it looks like they weren't quite sure whether it landed in or out. Penn State was pretty confident that she told the block and it landed out of bounds. But when you have a cannon like Merzik, that's kind of difficult sometimes. Yeah, that one's definitely clear out of bounds, but she hits hard, that came back fast. Sweeney going off speed. Hannah, more power, but picked up in the back row. Pedraza gets it over to Merzik. And a big dig by Grimes. And then Merzik misses. Point to the Hawkeyes, they're within five. Great defense on this Hawkeye side right now. They're able to give their offense more opportunities by getting some digs and stopping this Penn State offense. And when you do that and you play in longer rallies, you're kind of giving more opportunity for the other team to make an error, which is exactly what happened with Jess Merzik just missing that ball out of bounds. Sidney Dennis serving Merzik, getting the first swing of this rally. Black has it sent back in Holland and Merzik building a wall. There's one thing about Penn State is that they are going to always build a wall in every single match. They're the best blocking team in the Big Ten. Huge part of it is Allie Holland. She's able to read the setters on the other side of the net so well so she can get a quick lateral step and help put up a double block with her pin blockers. And Nittany Lions defense has been steady and Coach Schumacher Colley says it's really the communication the cohesion between front and back row. Pedraza goes to Merzik and she rips it. Jess Merzik has so much power as an attacker. She's honestly just so fun to watch because she can adjust to any set. And then when you have a great set that Mac Pedraza just gave her, pushed all the way out to the line, she's able to cut that ball down the line without giving it away. Extremely deceptive shot, and that comes with the experience that she has. Pedraza putting it on a tee for her time and time again. Off the slide, it is Davis. And Merzik once more earning the overpass at the net and kept up by the Hawkeyes. Pedraza, but that's red in the back row. Up the middle, more great efforts. Pedraza. Looking to Holland, and how many stops can she make? Ortega flying all over. Still going. Merzik. And a point to Penn State. She keeps it in. Wow. Great defense on both sides of the net here. This Iowa defense is so scrappy. Time and time again, able to make plays to try to make the other team put a ball away on them. That's one thing that head coach Katie schumacher Colley said for Penn State is that Iowa has a lot of long rallies when you play against them because they are such a scrappy team. So they need to be able to win those rallies. When you have a player like Jess Merzik, she's going to say, this rally is done. I'm putting this away. It's exactly what she did. And that's what this Penn State team is focused on when you play a scrappy defensive team like Iowa. Jim Barnes has one challenge left. He just is deciding to use it right now with Penn State inching closer to set point here in set number two in Coralville. Looks like that ball is pretty clearly in. If it touches any part of the white line, it's still in. It has to be clear out of bounds, not touching the white line or the gray part of the court for the ball to be overturned. So I think that one was in, but honestly, a good challenge by Coach Barnes. The call is confirmed, so he loses the challenge, but he's able to give his team a bit of a breather after a really long rally, can kind of use it as a little bit of a timeout. So not like a smart time to use the challenge, especially if you thought that that ball was out of bounds. And those kind of rallies 
you really lose your wind. Absolutely. They were playing for close to a minute. I was out of breath just watching that. I remember it was Nebraska. Was it against Purdue where they had a minute long rally and Lexi Rodriguez completely honestly admitted afterwards we were gassed yeah. after that. Yeah. I mean, in volleyball, you play really quick rallies. So when those rallies do go that long, you're not used to it. Addy Bilinovic at the service line. Ortega who had a couple of huge digs. Back in on the offense. From the back row, it is Moravec unloading. Fantastic swing from Moravec out of the back row. I talked about she has so much range as an attacker, and this was a beautiful choice by Ortega to use her in the back row, even though she has three front row attackers. That adds a whole nother layer to your offense and kind of tricks that Penn State block because now they have another person they have to worry about on the other side of the net. Audrey Black, back to serve for the Hawkeyes. Here is Merzik, but she misses out of bounds and a point to Iowa. A couple times in that spot. Yeah, exactly. I was about to say that. A couple times Merzik has been trying to hit that sharp cross. Iowa's doing a good job taking her line and forcing her to hit that shot, kind of tunneling the ball towards their libero, Dennis, and Merzik just missing wide a couple times. Second contact, a little awkward, and the Hawkeyes will pick up the point with that aggressive serving by Black. Not an error Penn State wants to make, but that does start on the service line. You're getting them out of system. Mac Pedraza is not able to get to that ball, so then there's a miscommunication about who takes the second ball. Black hoping to keep it going for the Hawkeyes. Raza to Merzik, and what about that stop by Iowa? Great block from Iowa, picking up some momentum right now in a 4-0 scoring run. They see that once again out of system. The only place that ball can go is the outside to Merzik. They put a and how cool to see not only it benefiting the University of Iowa Children's Hospital, but all those other football traditions too. A kids captain, the Kinnick Wave. I talked to. Caitlin Clark at Media Day, she said those were the two things she was maybe most excited about in this exhibition. Iowa getting within three, and that's something we knew coming in for this Penn State team. We talk all the time, every coach a broken record. You cannot overlook anyone in the Big Ten. Iowa as scrappy as they come. And the service line working wonders, executing the game plan, making Penn State uncomfortable. One of the biggest points of emphasis from head coach Jim Barnes was getting service pressure right away throughout the entire match. And that's exactly what this Iowa team is doing. Able to come within two points, they're putting pressure on those Penn State passers and really making them struggle in service. Eve. Audrey Black gonna keep going to work. Draza looks to Merzik, and they finally get the side out, but fantastic work by Black and the Hawkeyes with their serve. Great serve run there by Iowa, and then if you're Penn State, you're looking for a side out, the player you go to is Jess Merzik. She has so much experience, and she's such a smart player that when you get yourself in a bit of a pickle, give that ball to Merzik, she will find a way to get you out of it. Merzik serving now as Ortega has to chase it down awkwardly and kept in play. Markley has that tonight. She gets another look and is denied once more in Penn State scrambling. From the back row, more of that and an overdick. Here's Butner trying to terminate but tapped right back. Up the middle, Holland gets a piece of the block and puts it away. 
We're seeing everyone get involved on both sides of the net. These setters really passing that ball around, around, able to get Allie Holland involved at the end of a long rally. But I do think Penn State thought that that first ball over from Iowa was outside the antenna because right away they were saying that ball's out of bounds. But sometimes you have to keep playing until the whistle blows, which is exactly what they did. You've heard coaches say it many, many times. An example right there. Pedraza goes cross court to Markley, who's looking for that back corner, and it works perfectly. Beautifully placed ball by Markley. She sees that the defense isn't in that deep corner, so she's able to throw it back there. Morovic just one step too late to be able to play that ball back into the court. Just a really smart play from a young outside hitter at Markley. Penn State leading by five. And out of system, almost didn't get that third contact. Markley has to readjust. And at the net, it was touched by Iowa. So Penn State will pick up the point, and they've got set points. It's like Iowa just in the net there, but Penn State able to bounce back. Iowa went on a nice little 6-0 run. Now Penn State on a 4-0 scoring run. We're seeing a lot of runs from the service line from both of these teams, which is exactly what they want. Serving was a huge emphasis from both head coaches before the match. Ortega has to run that one down. Pedraza looks to Markley, and that lands in front of Dennis. Four set point. Penn State, the number 13 team. Jess Merzik is Angelina Stark heads to the service line. Penn State looking to close the door on this match and pick up a road Big Ten victory. But last set was close. It was 21-18 before Penn State took off. And here they will strike first in the third. Iowa was able to slow down that Penn State offense a little bit in the second set. They were absolutely blistering hot in the first set. They were able to get some more blocks on them. Iowa defense making Penn State attackers work a little more for their kills. Ortega tapping it to McSweeney and read by Penn State. Here is Merzik taking care of business with the termination. That's such a beautiful attack by Merzik because the set isn't exactly where she wants it, but she's such a great athlete that she's able to adjust to it and still place that ball in a spot where it can score. Ortega behind her head to Moravec. And that is shanked, an excellent kill by Moravec. Great swing by Moravec. She's staying really aggressive throughout this match. And she just has so much upside as a player overall, especially as an attacker. She's starting to kind of come into a player that this Iowa team looks to when they need a kill. They took things slow with her, and it's only been recently she's worked her way and earned being that six rotation player. They're in air at the service line, though. And Jillian Grimes will serve for the Nittany Lions. Being a six rotation player is a really difficult thing to do, especially when you're an underclassman, because it's a lot of pressure in both the front row and the back row. Morbex handling it fairly well so far. That kept in. Beautifully done by Jillian Grimes. That one just dropped right at the end line. Jillian Grimes able to paint that line. Beautiful serve, trying to get Penn State on a little bit of a service run so that they can close out this match. That one just fell off the table. As McSweeney touches it off the block for a kill. We've been seeing Ortega go to McSweeney fairly early in each set, but she gets a little quiet as the match goes on, which is what you expect. As in the beginning of the set, you want to get your middles involved, but the goal is to keep them involved throughout that entire set and not start getting predictable. Time for a team high with five kills. Beautiful sets and read by Butner, who quickly gets into place. Grimes will set it to Hannah, who's sent back. Draws will go to Hannah once more, and she puts it away with force. Beautiful swing by Hannah, but I want to highlight that Mac Pedraza set. She's running forward, and she's able to place that ball exactly where Hannah needs it to hit that down the line. She makes it look easy. That's an incredibly difficult set to make, and she puts it exactly where Hannah needs it. 
When you make plays like that look easy, that's how you know you are one of the best setters in the nation. Remarkable play by Mac Pedraza. Tries to dump it in. And at the net, it's going to go to Iowa. A little awkward on both sides, tapping it back and forth. Bit of a weird play. That's probably one of those Mac Pedraza is going to watch film later and be a little upset with herself. But that's a difficult one. She's already looking a little like, ah, I want that one back. But sometimes the ball just catches you a little awkward. You just want to shake that one off and get back into the flow of your game. But really nice scrappy play on the Iowa side to win that point. Michelle Urquhart at the service line, one of the most dangerous. That time misses by quite a bit, though. Markley checking back in for Penn State, leading all players with 12 kills. Just two errors tonight. That's pretty good. Well, 435, <laughs> coming off a career-high 15 kills. Most recently against Ohio State is Holland. She says no with a lot of emphasis there. This Penn State block is so dominant. They've honestly been a little bit quiet tonight, and that's because of the great serving on both sides. But right there, once again, a great serve from Penn State. Allie Holland and Mac Pedraza are able to put up a nice, solid block and shut down that outside pin for Iowa. Ortega looks to Butner, and there's Merzik with a nice looking pass. Merzik with another one, and it leads to a slide attack by Holland. Great swing there by Holland. She's able to speed up when the ball is set, which is exactly what you want to do as a slide attacker. You want to kind of chase that ball, keep it in front of you so you're able to see where those blockers are. She sees that there's a hole in the block that she can hit it through. But once again, great set there by Mac Pedraza to get her middle involved, and then fantastic effort by Holland to get herself available in transition. Merzik looking to continue this run for the Nittany Lions. A big dig by Bilinovic. At the net, Pedraza keeping it up. And Markley is slicing it. And there's the whistle, and Penn State awarded with the point. Got to keep playing until the whistle, until you have to hear it a couple times there. But really great effort on both sides of the net. We saw a little setter v. setter joust up there, and then Markley's able to put that ball away. Once again, she's had the go-to arm in this match with 13 kills for the Nittany Lions. Into the net. And off the service there, a point for the Hawkeyes. As they look to stay within reach of Penn State, this is a Hawkeye team 0-6 in Big Ten play. Have not won a set since September 21st. They took Minnesota to five. But then their schedule has been formidable. Four ranked teams, and then you also add in Illinois and Indiana. But it's one of those nights where someone like Alexa Markley is untouchable. Alexa Markley, once again, a beautiful swing by her. But this Iowa team has had a really difficult schedule so far. And honestly, any schedule in the Big Ten is going to be extremely difficult. Head coach Jim Barnes said it's their goal is to just keep improving through each challenge. Even in defeat, keep improving and finding your confidence. Pedraza looks to Markley once more, gets a piece of that block. 14 kills early in the third. Alexa Markley, honestly, there's just not much to say about her right now. Every time she touches the ball, she's putting it away. Once again, has a smaller block on her, so she sees that. She's able to tool it off of Ortega's hands for a great quick kill for her team. I mentioned her career high 15. That was in five sets 
and she's nearing that now as Penn State earns another. And that was a quick burst of points, a timeout called by Jim Barnes and Iowa with Penn State leading 12-4 to on the road, looking to wrap things up in Iowa. Ball as well. And Penn State out of the timeout, extending the lead to nine with that ace by Holland. Great serve there by Holland right out of a timeout. That's really difficult to do. A lot of the times timeouts are called to kind of ice the server. Holland went back there, served a great ball in to give her team a nice ace. It's exactly what you want to see from a player out of a timeout. She goes right back to Dennis, and that is back to back. Nice little gritty celebration from the team on the court. I love that. I talked about it before, but as a middle, when you get to serve like Holland is, you take advantage of that because a lot of the times you have such a high contact point being one of the taller players on the team. So you're able to get that ball to drop just based off of where you can touch the ball. That's exactly what Holland does there. That ball drops right off the table. She gets two aces and kind of solidifies her part, her spot there as the serving middle. And we know for Holland, she's one of the most fiery competitors in the Big Ten. When you think about serving, it very much is a one-on-one -on -one matchup where you want to win, and you are staring down who you're targeting, in this case, Dennis, and she wants to get the upper hand. I'm sure she is viewing this as a one-on-one -on -one fight right now between her and whoever she's serving that ball to. Right now, Allie Holland is doing a pretty great job putting some great service pressure on the Iowa service team. They're not able to handle it. They need to at least try to just get a ball up. You don't necessarily need to make it a perfect pass, but get that ball in play. Holland again going to Dennis. This time passes it well. Pedraza up the middle. It's Trammell off a couple hands, but the middle has been so tough for Penn State tonight. Trammell honestly has been a little bit quieter than I would have expected, but she's been so efficient every time she has gotten set. She's four for five right now, hitting 800, and she's working really hard to get up there for Mac. But Mac honestly has so many options that you're going to have someone be a little bit quieter offensively when you have Alexa Markley with 14 kills in three sets. Moravec getting the swing and tools it well. This Iowa team still fighting. They still have some fire because in these matches, you never know what's going to happen. That's a really great pass and a great set made to Moravec on that outside. A nice side out. And now Iowa needs to try to get some runs from the service line. Pedraza going to the hot hand, and it gets to the floor. Alexa Markley, goodness gracious, what did you eat for dinner before <laughs> this match? 15 kills and we're not even through the third set. That is such an impressive stat. And all of her kills have been different ways. She's just mixing up her shots so well. She had a career high 15 kills in five against Ohio State. Matching that career high with 15 as you mentioned, not even through three. And how important is that to Penn State when you can establish a scary arm in addition to Merzik? I think that's the most important thing, honestly, is you have a player like Jess Merzik, who, yes, you can rely on, but you need to make sure that you have other players contributing. And that's exactly what they have right now. Alexa Markley with 15 kills, but Cameron Hanna has eight, and then Merzik has eight. You're getting that offense spread around so you can have threats in more than just one player. Merzik, big dig. So we weathering two into the net for the first time with a big swing. Mersick one more time. Weatherington going off speed, but she will just miss. I like that shot there by Weatherington, trying to place that in the back corner. Just missed it, but goodness gracious, when she hit that first ball, the crack on that ball, she has some power. Zoe Weatherington's a really fun one to watch. And an ace for the Hawkeyes. Then Bailey Ortega, whether at the service line, getting in on digs, of course, playing this 5-1 for the first time this season, a lot on her shoulders. She's been making it count. That time leaves it shallow, two in a row for Ortega. 
Whew, that serve absolutely dropped off the table. As a serve receiver, those are so hard to read because you think it's coming to you, and then boom, it just drops off right in front of you. Such a well-placed serve, and she knew it. I bet as soon as she touched that ball, she knew that that was going to be an ace. Pedraza to Markley and kept up by Butner with the dig. A free ball for Penn State. Up the middle, it is trammel. So much power. This Penn State offense has so many weapons throughout the court. Taylor Trammell, Alexa Markley, Jess Merzik, and that's what makes them so good as a team. They're not ranked 13th in the nation for no reason. They're a great blocking team, but they also have a very well-rounded offense. And an ace on the other side for Penn State, it's Angelina Stark. Adding some aces in also does, does help <laughs> when you're a team. You have a great block, great defense, and then an efficient offense. Adding in some aces helps get some more points in there as well. They equal Iowa six in this match as McSweeney hammers it down. Iowa's definitely fighting to stay in this match. It's not even whether they end up winning this match or this set. It's about building momentum as you keep playing throughout the season. Every night in the Big Ten is going to be a battle. So you want to keep fighting. You never want to just back down from any challenge. Especially after last season's match went to five. And there's Weatherington. You can barely see that ball go by. It was so quick. Weatherington has a great combination of power and speed in her arm swing. We saw the power in her first swing of the match, and then right there, speed. That ball went down so fast. Great swing from Weatherington. Ortega leaving it for Butner and tapped right back for Weatherington. Having a big impact in set three. Coming in off the bench and immediately making her presence known. She had a kill. She gets up here. It's a tight set. So she knows, I need to make sure I'm pressed over so I don't get used by this attacker. Did that so well. Coach schumacher Colley has talked about how players on this team have had their roles change. Weatherington is one of them, has seen her playing time change, but she credited up and down the roster, everyone being coachable, supporting each other, holding each other accountable. And then you get into moments like this and you are ready to play. And she told us she's so proud of how her team has been playing because being in new roles is not easy, but they've been handling it and they just want to win. Weatherington, wow. The termination, unreal. While we haven't seen Weatherington that much tonight, she is such a fantastic player. She played at Utah and was honorable mention all Pac-12. She knows how to put a ball away, and she's making her impact known right away in this match. At the service line. That time, though, shanks the pass and a point to Iowa. They are within nine here in set three. If I'm Iowa right now, I'm definitely trying to just build some momentum. Like I said, it doesn't even have to be to win this set and win this match. Of course you want to try to come back and push this one to extra sets. But it's going into your next matches as the week goes on, as the season goes on. Keep fighting against these top teams like Penn State. And they will be facing Penn State next week at Rec, at Rec Hall as Holland sends that a little too long. Point goes to the Hawkeyes. But Coach Barnes says this team has been in good spirits. Before practice, they have a chair circle together. They talk about a specific message. And they also have shout outs after practice as well to just build each other up. Off the overdig. Penn State's got it. And another look and another big dig by Dennis. Pedraza once more goes to Merzik and she puts it away. Jess Merzik once again ending a long rally, but Sydney Dennis on Iowa there making some really hard digs off Merzik and she just wasn't able to get that last one. Caught her a little bit high on the left side of her body, but Sydney Dennis is such a great defender for this Iowa team. She's second in the Big Ten in total digs. She's a big part in what keeps them in long rallies. Penn State up to 22. On the back row, Moravec 
into the net and a point to Penn State. Just like the first set, this Penn State offense has been absolutely firing so far in the third set. 13 kills, only two errors. They're hitting 458. When you're Iowa, you need to try to match those kills and try to get some kills of your own because when a Penn State offense is firing like that, there's really no way to stop them. Markley off the block. 16 kills and a new career high and doing it in three. This is exactly the note that Penn State wants to go into tomorrow's huge showdown against number two Nebraska, which you can watch here on Big Ten Network. The Huskers have won five in a row, 12 of the last 13. You know how hungry the Nittany Lions are for a win in Lincoln, something they have not done since 2013, but they're gonna be walking in with confidence. Here they have match point again. While that's a huge matchup tomorrow night, this Penn State team has done a really great job of not overlooking Iowa. Iowa is a really good team, and that's one thing Coach Schumacher Colley told us before the match is we are focused on Iowa right now. Yes, Nebraska is next, but going into this match and being able to handle business the way that Penn State has, it's exactly what they need before they face the number two team in the nation. Pedraza up the middle and an appropriate way to end off an Allie Holland swing. And they get.